for years and years. He's been in this house many, many times. We've had many, many a heart-to-heart -heart talk. You'll meet a Bobby Darren, I think, that uh, a lot of people don't know. Many people have a strange view of this man. The Bobby Darren you're about to see uh, is at home in a nightclub or on a television screen or a motion picture screen. What he'll do right now is not that unusual. It's here in a house, in the recreation room, as a matter of fact, downstairs. But in a moment, I think you'll meet a different Bobby Darren. <laughs> That Bobby Darren looks rather familiar, though he's performing for a, a private audience. This Bobby Darren is a fella I don't think you know. Now, you have the courage of your convictions, and you tackled an area of the press that uh, I don't think anybody ever has before, and that's fan magazines. Now, fan magazines are delightful things. They, are they? The ladies read them under the really? hair dryers. Wonderful. The innocuous magazines. Uh -huh. Why they're not they innocuous. You? They're not innocuous, Richard. They certainly are not innocuous when they fall into the realm of describing an industry that I happen to be part of, body and soul, in such a manner and light as to make it the mocking point of, of, of the reader. You mean they don't, they don't print the truth? I think they print about 1% truth and 99% nonsense and hearsay. And I've had them, I've proven it by suing. And did having them, mean? yes, I did. And having them print the fact that what they had written was hearsay. And what I was going after was for them to print the fact that 99% of what they said was hearsay, that they wouldn't consent to. The fact remains that you're, you're, when you talk about fan magazines, and if it was color, you'd know the... the <laughs> yeah, you see the, it in your eyes, man. Up. Yes, exactly. You talk about fan magazines, you're talking about a medium that is geared to a young, impressionable mind. Now, wait a minute. Hold on just a second. That may be true. You're talking about the teenage element. What about the young married housewife who goes to the hairdressers like my wife and comes back and who knows you and says, you know I what I read about believe, that Bobby Darren today? I, I refuse to believe that the young married housewife is, as in, is in as dangerous a position as the 14 or 13 or 11-year-old boy or girl who picks that trash up and reads it constantly. And that impression is left there. I would say that the poor, unfortunate that has to read that material for a form of relaxation is really up the creek. All right, fair enough. Married or no. Switch you to one last subject. Sure. What is the future for Bobby Darren? How old are you now? 21? 27. You feel old? No older for this year than I felt 10 years ago or seven years ago. You told me upstairs before that you're not going to make any more personal appearances. Correct. True? True. Why? I have come to the point where 
working on a stage, as much as I love the moments I'm on the stage, whether they be 50 minutes or an hour and 10 minutes, the time between becomes such a grind and it's so taxing on me physically as well as mentally that I just don't feel that I have long, much longer to contribute to it in a positive sense. For example, there's enough things... Is it going to cut things, your money in half? It'll cut, it, cut my income by more than half in terms of hard dollar income. You don't give any consideration to that? Not really, Richard. I tell you... You why. really are getting old now. You've well, seen the light. I, I'll tell you exactly what it boils down to. I've been running a long time. This is one of the things that the press has picked up on earlier. The running man, et cetera, et cetera. I've been running because I've always run. And I'm 2'7", and I watch a man who's a, quite a bit older. I, his name, I think, we might as well forget about. I watched a man say, and he's about 56, 57 years old, and I said to him, Mr. So-and-so, when would you like to start the next film? And he said, well, my wife and I plan to go to Europe, take us at least four or five months to drive around, and see everything we wanted to see. Why don't we start it in October? And they said, fine, sir. We'll give you a good date in October to start the film. And he left, finished the picture he was working on, drove cross country, or trained across country, took a boat across the water, picked up his car, which was sent before, and drove around Europe for four or five months, and we'll do that until October. You understand? Yeah. Now, he has had to wait, evidently, to do this to, until the age that he is now. I don't plan on doing that. Thank you very much, Bobby Darren, who happens to be a show business personality.